Hello, welcome to part three of our marijuana education initiative for seventh grade students in Woodland Park Middle School. Remember, we are focusing on vaping and the consequences that it has for youth. Now, remember we talked about in the first video a little bit about the history behind vaping and the how what it is and how it works. On the second video, we focus more on the uh, health effects associated with nicotine and how it's a highly addictive substance. In fact, the third most addictive substance in drugs on the world and that people, uh, don't know necessarily that vaping actually has equal amounts of nicotine to those that you can find in cigarette smokes, especially of jewel products, and that they are designed to deliver nicotine with the same kind of potency that cigarette smoking does. We also talked about the fact that nicotine has especially troublesome effects in a young brain, because if you consume nicotine while your brain is still forming, still creating those networks, then the chemicals that it uses to communicate, especially acetylcholine, won't be produced as much. And then the framework of your brain development will forever have the marks of that dependency. And even though your brain is plastic and it can adapt, having developed that way will make it even harder to overcome the dependency that you would have to nicotine, which is acting like a replacement for that chemical. And therefore, your body stops producing as much. Not only that, but nicotine is not a good replacement. So your brain won't, won't work exactly the way it's supposed to. It needs that chemical. And so you want to avoid exposing yourself to a situation, especially when your brain is developing, where you develop a framework that is based on that dependency, right? Now, we're going to pick up where from we were left off and talk about how that potency is actually generated. They deliver it through nicotine salts, which are attached to the liquid inside of the cartridge, which on a compound that's called volatile organic compounds. And these are the things that actually evaporate as the cigarette actually, or the e-cigarette actually um, heats up enough. So part of the juice is these compounds. And they carry with it the flavoring and those nicotine salts in a smoke-like substance, which you actually inhale and exhale. So that's the actual smoke, those evaporated oils. And the most common types of that are propylene glycol, uh, vegetable glycerin, and diacetyl. We'll talk about some of these compounds in a second. Now, the propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin are the most common types of organic volatile organic compounds included in e-cigarettes. And we're not sure if they are bad for you, but the research is still out. What we are sure about is that other volatile organic compounds have been shown to actually have cancer-causing properties. Now, every time you actually use an e-cigarette, there is going to be VOCs. There's no way around it. You cannot create that smoke without them. It is what actually gets the smoke. So the oil becomes an aerosol, which means a, a gas that you can actually smell. Now, without it, you wouldn't have vaping. And so there is no vaping without it. Do you want to be the lab rat that finds out 20, 30 years from now that that has a serious tendency to cause cancer? The same way that people that used to smoke cigarettes in the earlier 20th century thought that it was okay, thought even it maybe may be good for them, uh, you know, take a little bit of the edge off, whatever, and they found out they were more likely to get cancer. So the research is still out on this, but we do know that other VOCs have been known to cause cancer. Don't expose yourself. Don't be the lab rat. Don't be the one that finds out later that you have a higher tendency to have cancer because you actually consume these products. Now, other indications of health risks are possible, including a study conducted in 2018 that showed that students and teenagers that vape have five different kinds of chemicals or toxins in their urine samples compared to students that don't have it. So that means that there's a higher likelihood for you to show toxins in your urine if you vape, but that's only a correlation. We're not sure, again, that vaping was what's causing these results, but there certainly is a relationship between them. So again, it's suggesting that vaping could be problematic. I'd also like to remind you guys that I showed you a study on the first video that's more recent than this presentation is that actually got published at the end of last year that there is serious lung damage indication on early studies associated with vaping. So the the... The science is starting to come in showing that there could be serious health effects associated with vaping. But I'll tell you one more story to make you think about whether you should do this or not. Okay. So, uh, artificial butter flavoring 
and buttery popcorn used to use a compound called diacetyl, all right? Now they don't use it anymore because there was a uh, condition called popcorn lung, which is a kind of bronchiolitis, right? That actually makes your insides of your lungs kind of look like they're popcorn shape. Obviously, there's not popcorns inside, but it's a serious condition. And it was determined that was indeed diacetyl vapor that was being in entering the actual system of the workers in the factory from the actual oils that were actually being heated during the production factory process that was causing the problem. What does this have to do with vaping? Everything. Because diacetyl is one of the most common types of chemicals often used in flavoring on e-juice and e-cigarettes and other vape products. So the flavoring that, that is often re related to this diacetyl compound. And as you saw, it was banished from those factories because of the tendency to pop, cause popcorn lung. And see, here's some of the symptoms. Constricted airways, shortness of breath, blue-tinged fingers because of lack of oxygen, wheezing, crackling, and fatigue. And the craziest thing is that the damage is not reversible. All right? And so you would have to damage the lung for the rest of your life unless you get a transplant. And it's hard to get a transplant if you did the damage yourself and have a habit. So there you go. And remember, I showed you the study on this on the first video. There's real science that's starting to come out showing indications of serious damage associated with that. There's even studies that show that their metal particles are being inhaled as, as to, from the vape pen somehow and getting stuck on your lungs. Crazy stuff. So you want to avoid uh, being the lab rat, like I said. But there are other risk risks. Remember, we talked about the fact that nicotine is a serious uh, addictive substance and it can impact you have a lifelong problem with addiction, especially on the developing brain. And besides, you are not really supposed to in inhale stuff, right? Uh, smoke and causes damage to lungs. You're not going to put your mouth on a polluted air uh, um, chimney because it's bad for you. You know that you're not evolved to actually inhale smoke, right? So... It's not a good idea. It's not something that's natural, not something that you're supposed to be doing. Unless it's like medicine or clean air, it's not something you should put putting inside your lungs. Last but not least, this is a minor risk, but it is possible. Lithium uh, batteries have been shown to actually ex spontaneously explode, causing severe damage, and they are always part of those cartridges. This is what actually powers them. Now, of course, that's the same risk you have when you have a cell phone in your pocket. The difference is the cell phones are regulated, and the Vaping pens, there is no regulation for how the devices actually work. So anybody can sell a device that's not safe, and you don't know because nobody is actually regulating it. So these are way too many health risks associated with this. But the risks don't stop at health. There's also academic and social risks. All right? If you're caught with vaping devices in a school ground or a school-sponsored event, you can face an in- or out-of-school suspension and could be charged with violating the school tobacco or drug fee laws. But often, schools go through a process to try to identify if the vapor pain also has other chemicals in it, including THC, which causes bigger problems because that's an illegal drug for other age uh, uh, users, which is worse than the nicotine. So in that case, if the school suspects there's marijuana on it, the consequences can be worse. It goes from suspension to expulsion, even to potential loss of financial aid, and it could even jeopardize your chances of getting into the military if you're trying to get a military career. So the other interesting thing is that a lot of schools don't have to prove what's in the actual device. They only have to suspect and they can still administer that consequence. And so you really don't want to put yourself at risk of having to have those losses. So let's re review what we talked about so far. Aping has nicotine or THC products and e-juices, which include those volatile organic compounds, which are not harmless. Nicotine is extremely addictive, so that alone is a reason not to do it, especially um, if you're young enough that your brain is still developing, you want to develop your brain with that addiction in this framework. Most of them includes levels of nicotine which are similar to those that you would have in a traditional cigarette, especially Juul. And the effects of inhaling chemicals in the vaping pens is largely unresearched and unknown, but there are early research suggesting that there could be serious effects. 
in stories like the popcorn lung in the factory with the diacetyl, which is in vaping, and the volatile organic compounds that have cousins that have shown to have actual cancer-causing problems, toxins in people's urines. The study I showed you in the first video that shows the serious lung complications and breathing problems associated with vape users. So it's not as harmless as it seems to be. So you really should try to stay away from it. Try to not do it in the first place. Don't let peer pressure. Don't think it's cool because it's not. It's cool to be healthy, right? And don't do something that you're not supposed to naturally do that is just going to end up damaging you. It's not worth it. It's not worth to be addicted. Stay away from it. But if you already started, there are resources if you're trying to quit. 100 quit now. Uh, smoke free teens, teens, which is teen.smokefree.gov. And Smoke Free TXT, which is a texting service that sends you encouraging messages if you're trying to quit. All of these are res awesome resources. The second website can connect you with other kids which are actually trying to kick the habit and who have conquered their or have conquered the, their habit uh, and are, or who are struggling just like you are to get you to find support. You're not alone in this. The school is willing to help you too. There's counseling. There's mentors like me which are help willing to give you the help you need to stay away from this so that you don't expose yourself to unnecessary risks um, and it sounds like real risks as well even just the nicotine is bad enough to be a reason for you not to do it okay so i hope you guys make good choices and stay away from the stuff and from drugs in general be courageous this is worth losing a friend for anybody who's pressuring into this is not worth your time your friendship all right. Don't try to change them. Just say no to, to the thing they're offering. Say no to them from them on. Not worth your trouble. OK, I'm here for you guys. I hope you make good choices. Remember, don't do anything that would not make your mama proud.